from TimCast.com. Texas passes legislation requiring Ten Commandments to be displayed in every classroom. The bill's sponsor says the Ten Commandments are part of American tradition. Under SB 1515, which just passed the Senate by a 17 to 12 vote, every public elementary or secondary school must prominently display a durable copy or framed copy of the Ten Commandments that is at least 16 inches wide and 20 inches tall. The display must also be legible to a person with average vision from anywhere in the classroom. The bill's sponsor... State Senator Phil King said during a committee hearing on the bill that the Ten Commandments are part of American heritage and that it's time to bring them back into U.S. schools. Oh, boy. Wait, this is like there is no other God before me, no false idols. I mean, the Second Commandment basically says that Christianity is blasphemous. You're not supposed to worship people. Are they worshiping people? Well, this, Jesus, people, the Christians worship a, a human. And the, the second commandment. Oh, he, you, you, you're, you're, you are incorrect. That's yeah. incorrect. Yeah, it's incorrect. Yeah, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, whether it's a human or a thing. You don't right, worship other people. Jesus was, was Jesus not was a God. Human. Yeah. Well, that's human what they form. say. Yeah, they say he's a human that was also God. They but put at him the on same time, so the hypostatic nature. Exactly. It, the defies, it, defies, it defies the second commandment. You're not no, supposed to worship other people. No, but it, he's it God. He is fully God and fully human at the same time. So you worship fully God. Like it's, it's the, the, the word for it is hypostatic union because you cannot separate the two. So worshiping Jesus, I'm Catholic. That's why I know this. Um, worshiping Jesus, you are worshiping God. He is the son of God. He is part of the Trinity. Father, son, and Holy Spirit are all one, three in one. So it's not worshiping a person. It is worshiping God. It's worshiping a person, a person, God, and you can't, the spirit all at once. So yeah, it is like, a person. No, no, no. In your Father, son, and Holy Spirit are all three all three it's three in one it's the trinity it is god god took the form of a man to come to earth as jesus christ but you are you, it's not separated it's not like oh his body was human and his his spirit was god he was both fully god and fully man so worshiping and, and jesus is worshiping god and yeah. i don't, don't want to yeah, this argue, is actually a, i want to uh, talk about the this is a whole different podcast i, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want to <laughs> talk about the the political uh, oh, yeah. and, and philosophical Let's do it this so is first, wild. For those that I, I think we should tell you what the Ten Commandments are so you can yeah. understand what they they want to put in schools. I love the first one. One, no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Two, you shall not make for yourself a carved image. Is that uh, no false idols, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. Three is you shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain. Now, this one's interesting because um, what was explained to me, I think this was Prager who explained this. That a lot of people think it means you can't just say something like, oh, my God, because you're using it for no reason. But what he described, I could be wrong about who, if, if it was him or not, but someone described it as it would be like declaring war an enemy country and saying God wills it. Yes. You are taking his name to do your bidding and that's taking his name. In oh, vain. my gosh. These it's super also, churches make me think. It's that. also like, you know, the phrase, you know, the phrase Lord. Yeah. Lord is actually like not the name of God. But in the old in the Old Testament, the the Jewish people, God's people, believed that they couldn't say the name. Actually, Jews today still like abbreviate when they say God, they put a little dash between it mm. because you, they couldn't say the name of God, which is Yahweh. So that's it was four letters, Yahweh, and so they 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 called it Lord as a way of saying it without saying the name of God because it's so he's has such extreme majesty that well, they couldn't say the name. Let's read some more. Because again, I, I'm not here to teach you the Ten Commandments, everybody, but for the context of- <laughs> I'll do that, too. <laughs> this is what they want to put in the schools. You should know this. Four is remember the Sabbath day. Five is honor your father and mother. Six, you shall not murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness. Ten, you shall not covet. So this is being passed in Texas. They want this in elementary schools. I guess the question is, if, if they're putting critical race theory, critical theory, gender ideology in schools- Personally, I don't see any difference. And so my response is going to be, if you are trying to pass Marxism into schools, then I then, OK, fine, you do that. They do this. Where, where, what am I arguing? Can I tell you my super based opinion on this? Sure. OK, my super based opinion on this is that this is fabulous and that they should do it. And then it <laughs> violates it violates nothing about our, our heritage of law here. So truly in the conservative movement, the Republican Party, there's a difference between how we view laws, right? There's like the libertarian view that's like, we should be able to do whatever we want as long as we don't violate somebody else's fundamental human right. Government should get off my lawn. And then actual conservatism is not libertarianism. Actual conservatism is like in the in in the style of Edmund Burke, right? Where it's not absolute liberty, it's ordered liberty. Ordered liberty being defined as more like the pursuit of justice. And he defines justice because you're like, okay, well, what's justice? Then he defines justice as um, original justice, capital O, original justice, meaning rooted in the traditional Judeo-Christian morality. 
And this is not just something like, oh, okay, I'm a practicing Catholic. I'm coming in here with my religious views. Edmund Burke's philosophy is what our Constitution was based on. James Madison, the father of our Constitution, quoted Edmund Burke. So my belief is that indoctrination is morally neutral. It's not good or it's not good or bad in and of itself. I agree. And there's no such thing as neutrality. You, either we are going to be indoctrinating or they are going to be indoctrinating. I so if we don't agree. have this in schools, then Marxism, which I would argue is a form of like satanic ideology, then Marxism is going to be in our schools. So I would much rather have this. Do you agree with Ten Commandments in schools? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean... There is an argument. So I think people misinterpret how America treats religion, right? In France, you have freedom from religion. So you're not supposed to wear religious symbols in school. There's controversy over job, providing uh, kosher meals, things like that. In America, you have the freedom to practice your religion. However, and I think you're completely right, uh, we're actually a nation that's completely intertwined with Christianity. And so it's not wrong to have uh, the Ten Commandments in schools. I mean, you can reference it in a lot of different ways when you're teaching, right? Like, it's also uh, such a fundamental part of our life that like that when we talk about uh, observing the Sabbath, right? Like this is a case that the Supreme Court has agreed to take on. You have this uh, postal worker from Pennsylvania who said, you know, I'm a, I'm a practicing evangelical Christian and I observe the Sabbath on Sundays. And when the U.S. Postal Wor uh, Service started working with Amazon, they said, okay, but our workers have to work on Sunday. And he said, well, I need a religious exemption. And eventually... Uh, his postal workers where he's he's based we're like we're not going to we're gonna we're gonna keep scheduling you for sundays we're not going to acknowledge that you need a religious ex exemption even though our typical work week does allow for a yeah. sunday sabbath they said this is critical to our business and so therefore we are allowed this is two judges went through and said yeah they have the right to demand that you work and deny your religious exemption well you have the freedom to practice your religion right like hmm. i think that we are so afraid of religion as a country uh, uh, as a country that we don't learn how to talk about it in a way that's saying like you don't have to be a christian but you need to understand christianity to yeah. understand the influences it has yeah. on our country well so, so ian yes or no ten commandments in schools it depends on how it's taught because there's a difference between Mounted teaching down the walls that's what they said there's a difference between teaching about Christian or Judaism, this is Judaism. There's a difference between teaching about Judaism and indoctrinating well, people to become Jew. Okay, like, wait, wait, hold on. Ian, a specific question. They are mounting this. They want this mounted in elementary schools. No, I don't like it. It needs context. If they're going to teach it, they need to teach about it and not just make people think this is real. You're like, you have to be able to choose to believe that this is real. But all, all they're doing is putting it on the wall. Yeah, <clears throat> without context, that makes me nervous, man. I don't. You know, I'm I'm neutral on it. Um, I I certainly understand why Christians and Catholics and you know whatever uh, and and many Jewish people probably would would be like, yes, this is fantastic. We should have these values instilled to our children. And you're completely right about about indoctrination, 100. percent I would prefer the Ten Commandments over Marxism. Mm -hmm. So if someone came to me and said it's one or the other, I'd be like, oh, Ten Commandments all the way. But the like, system no where they're like, hey, here's a really horrible choice, and you're like, I don't want that. They're like. Okay, here's a little bit less horrible choice. Want that one instead? You're like, yeah, this I guess it's, it's less worse. It doesn't have to be either of them. You this is the compromise. No, that's what I don't believe, This, this is the compromise. I don't think there's anything. We're not any... talk... I'm sorry, go ahead. We're not talking about the school teaching Bible study. They're actually putting Marxism in classroom curriculum. And critical, uh, critical race theory and critical gender theory is literally being put into math problems. This is the compromise. This is, we're going to put it on the wall and say nothing. I'd like I mean, to see the four pillars of Islam. Is, uh, posted next but our country is, is not based different... in the four pillars of Islam. Our yeah. country is literally based on this. Think about our laws against homicide. Why do we, as a people, recognize that other human beings deserve protection under the law, but like dogs don't or something like that? If you look at morality and think about morality, there's actually no such thing as secular morality. Secular morality is just anarchy. It's just the strongest can dominate the weak. The only reason that we have order in our country right now, even as we are in a chaotic era, is because we have some acknowledgement at the base level that people have dignity, that people have value, and that's based on, that order is based on Judeo-Christian values. Now, you don't have to practice those values in your personal life, mm -hmm. but it is ahistorical to ignore the fact that our entire system, our entire republic is based on that. I yeah. Think the is it any different than having a dictionary in the classroom, right? Like if you're explaining, hey, fifth grader, these are what the Bill of Rights are like. Here's something that influenced mm -hmm. that. Like how is having this resource any different, right? Like if you want to talk about how it compares to Islam, then yeah, maybe you should bring in some, te some text well, let's, so let's, students can study it. The truth let's, is, let's, I think let's, let's Judaism is the most based religion. I I think it is phenomenal because it's about your religion your experience with god directly you don't need a priest you don't need any of that it's you and god i think that is where it all comes from uh, all of it christianity islam it all comes from judaism but 
I'm following the founding fathers saying church and state should be separate. They, I wait, don't wait, think they, they ever said that. That, I mean, that was, was only in one letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote to the Danbury Baptists to assure them that they weren't going to face discrimination from the government for practicing <clears> their religion. <throat> but the, the phrase separation of church and state was never part of any founding document. And it's not part of any philosophy about keeping morality out of law. It's only about whether the government can either force you to participate in religious practice or prohibit it. And, and I'm pretty sure... There was also, conversely, a founding father, maybe it was Franklin or Jefferson, that said, you need religion for a for a society to function properly. Yeah, John Adams said our country was made for a moral people and no other. Yes, I just yeah. I exactly. see the churches capitalizing on religion. That they're, they're, really right. bothers he, he, me. He's, he's right, though. We talk about this all yeah. the time. So the, the question I've asked is, would the United States be better? Or someone asked us this, would the country be better if it was a Christian theocracy? And first of all, better, I guess, is subjective. But if you were to talk about... Do we want less crime? Do we want a stronger economy? Do we do we want better health care? If everybody shared the same moral foundations, everyone's lives would be better. However, I'm not saying which moral foundations. I'm just saying if you had 100 million people that all agreed communism was perfect, guess what? It would work. The reality is communism doesn't work because no one ever agrees to that great extent. Someone's always got to run a system or whatever. That's why communism doesn't work. But if everybody had a simple moral foundation that was like the Ten Commandments or otherwise, everybody agreed that, that you know, there was an afterlife, there was a God, you, we have to be good stewards of the earth and, and all that, you'd, you'd have to worry a lot less about crime. The, the issue is, right now, no one believes or fears that there is any consequence to the bad things they do, so we experience more crime and corruption. Were you, Liz, were you taught religion as a kid? Yes, yeah, I was raised in a I was raised in a Catholic home, and then of course you get to an age uh, as a young adult where you have to decide like, okay, am I going to continue in this practice as an adult and own it versus just participate in a family? One more point about this being in schools, though, and this is really interesting if you read the history of public schools in our country. Compulsory public schooling only became a thing in like I think Massachusetts was the first state to do it in 1836, and the reason that they did that. The reason they had compulsory public schooling was to indoctrinate children in two things, in American values and in Protestant values. Because at that time in our country, there were tons of immigrants coming in our country. A lot of them were Catholic immigrants. And the, the people in charge of our government at the time were very anti-Catholic. They were very Protestant. And they wanted to form a new generation of children that understood that they weren't they weren't. They shouldn't identify as the country that they came from. They needed to identify as American. So they had to be taught American civics and they wanted them taught Protestant values. So the purpose of our education system has actually always been indoctrination. We've just, I mean, it was just hijacked by people who wanted to indoctrinate the opposite let's, of what it was intended. Yeah, to. Let's, 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 let's do this. I want to like Rockefeller. Let me ask you guys, I want to read the commandments and, and then get your opinions on it. So let's, because they're, because they want to teach kids this, let me ask you, you all first. Obviously, I think the, the Christians in the room are going to have an obvious answer. Uh, no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Is that something a children should be taught in general? Uh, this one makes me nervous because if I say to you, Tim, there is no other God before me and I'm reading you the commandment, there's, there can be a possibility that you think that it's Ian. There's no other God before the ego that is speaking the words. So that's one gets misinterpreted when the guy stands up and says it out loud. It's true that there is one God. But it is not for it's not me. It's well, right, right, God I, is I speaking don't, through hold, 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 hold I think on. that's. I think it's unlikely that people would misinterpret it. Like I think well, the but priests on. stand okay. up and take sure. the, take the credit let's, for a lot of stuff. They become the one. They read from the But that's not my question. That's not my question. My question is: If you, is it is it a good thing to teach a child about the one God? I'm not saying to accidentally say to a kid a sentence and then walk away. I'm saying should should a, an, an adult be telling a children basic philosophies around the First Amendment? Yes. Depends on the teacher. First, first commandment. You said first yeah, okay. amendment. First right. commandment. First amendment. <laughs> but hey, man, the they, they, they crafted the ten, the ten amendments. You know, the ten I, bill of rights is kind of like a. I think part of it is like yes, as a Christian, mm. I think sounds good to me, and I can understand in a diverse society where there are different religious views, you might be concerned, like seeing there's only one Christian God. Does that isolate someone else? But I think the idea behind this, meaning that there is one point of authority, there's one point of point of morality, is a good concept to teach people, right? It, it can make them subsist, um, subservient to authority. So you got to be careful about that. If I was a kid and I saw that on the wall and I didn't know what it meant, I'd, I'd first thing I would ask is, what is but what, God? But right, right, but, but to clarify, I get it. But I'm trying to clarify. I'm not sa suggesting that. I'm saying, should children be taught that there is one God and no other God? Are you talking about by public schools or in general? Should in children, general. Oh, should children be taught that? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. It's Ian, no, Ian, no. Ian, it needs Ian, to be more truth. than that because it's it's, it's both one and many, and and it's what is it, and you got to explain what it well, is. It's never gonna I'm, be taught I'm, in I'm asking you, Ian. 
if they should teach that in to, school to no in general oh well yeah i think so that's my that's what i like to do that I because think it's our job they, they could also teach polytheism they could say which that, we should yeah, yeah no i'm saying they go to children and say did you know that zeus is a top mount olympus and zeus was is, a guy that had electricity and he lied to people and told him he could shoot like <laughs> <laughs> and he had sex with his that. kids that month <laughs> <laughs> nut job they're a big cult living up in the mountains that's a that's a 20 and that's a 20 Seriously. uh so here, here's the next one <laughs> sorry i can't get over it should children in general be told not to worship false idols yeah absolutely when yes. I, I completely agree i Especially think you agree too that, that was the like point of your first materialism and, and self -love. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure everyone but, agrees yeah yeah <laughs> hey, but only in conjunction with the first because you need to know what to worship Exactly. And that, it actually says that. It says the first and second, second commandments go hand in hand. The, I think the second commandment is actually not even necessarily a Christian. It, it doesn't need to be seen as a Christian specific thing. Telling people not to worship false idols, I think, is a good thing. Jewish. It's a just Jewish a, thing. These are all Jewish. Yeah. So uh, uh, we all agree with that. And, and, and I'll just say, I think it's because there are bad things that will try to trick you and deceive you. And you could be tricked into worshiping bad things. We're trying to say, be careful of those who would trick you into worshiping. Money. Do not worship it. Bad politicians. I like mean, I got to interject seriously. here and say that as a Catholic, we look at the Bible as a whole, not just line by line. Like everything isn't, everything is con is contextualized both mm -hmm. with the old covenant and then the fulfillment, the new covenant and the gospel. So it's not just good advice for your life. It all centers around the fact that God has given us these laws in order for us to better worship him and ultimately, and this is, I know the religious point of view, but it's not just secular advice for your life. But I, I think that's a actual component. I think these are to help you actually live a better, happy and more fulfilling life. Mm -hmm. If, if, if I were well, to- How do you define those words? Like better, happier and more fulfilling? Do you define those as like just here on earth or do you find that, do you define that like, okay, well- I'm saying it's both. On earth, your goal is actually keeping your eyes on eternity to live this life so that you can get to the next. I will say, if your view is that this is to better worship God, that is true and correct. And I would also say, if you follow them, your life will be better in general. Yeah, and if you're, on, if you're tripping on that. DMT and you know this stuff, you'll be better off while you're tripping. So this this next one, three is interesting. It's funny that we're actually discussing the philosophy of the Ten Commandments. I'm actually really excited for this. You shall not take the name of your Lord God in vain. Uh, I'm going to start this one because I am not Christian. I do believe in God. And my view is, call it whatever you want, call it superstitious or spiritual. I am very reluctant to curse or tempt the fates. I have that I have had many instances in my life where I have, I don't know how you describe it. I wouldn't necessarily say it's using the Lord's name in vain, but arrogance. And then I had the pie thrown in my face where I've made jokes thinking, who cares? And then experienced an, a, a, a thing. I've, I've had experiences in my life where I've sat behind my computer and mocked someone just to myself. And then a week later, met them, and they were the nicest person in the world to me, just ripping my heart out. And I'm like, I can't believe I would think those things about this person. That was the stupidest thing. So I look at this, I'm like, call it whatever you want. I believe there is something greater than us, and I believe insulting the universe, the greater, the energy, or God, or, or that is just, I stay away from that. I think it's a bad thing. I think you will be better off if you remain humble. Dude, and, and also accept your accept that there are powers beyond you. Like I think yeah. God speaks to people. I have when I clear my mind and I ask, tell me what to do. I get a vision of what I'm doing. And and but if I went online and said God is command commands you to subscribe to me for ten dollars a month, like that's the vein. That's the absolutely vein. that never never that you need to follow that commandment. Sure. You do not abuse that thing. I think that's one interpretation yeah, of the word vein. I think the other part is saying that like you have to set boundaries for yourself on what you're allowed to say, like being able to basically understand what's inappropriate, what's not appropriate. You are able to better understand respect. Like this is basically the concept of respecting something that has more authority and knowledge than you do, right? And like that is actually a good principle to carry out in life. So I, I'm it's just like the principle of salvation, really. Mm -hmm. It like it's like the ultimate humility because we are we are not worthy of even saying his name, let alone living forever with him in eternity and experiencing his love, right? I, I think- to Except for that he came to save us. To kind of simplify why I wanted to go through these as they're talking about putting it in schools is that we need to teach basic philosophy. Mm -hmm. On, like, I think the idea that people say we are wet, we are moist robots and there is nothing beyond life. I'm like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like any, any degree of scientific understanding, philosophical understanding, and spiritual general knowledge, like general, like I'm saying, if you're not a Christian and you just read the Bible to better understand what people think, all of these things would lead 
I think any person who, t- who, who is an open mind and is, is actually trying to learn, they would be like, there is something truly beyond us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at the very least. And so you got to teach kids philosophy. I, I think, th- I think th- these are all really great. To this be could go in a science class because you're talking about quantum physics. I mean, then. Well, let's, let's, let's read. Look, remember the Sabbath day. I'm fairly neutral on this. I mean, I think a day off is very important, a day of rest. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it means something else to Christians, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, the Sabbath is really about like meditating family. on your family, meditating on the philosophy of the things that you've learned. Like, I think that the Sabbath day is uh, something our culture doesn't appreciate because we just see it as the day before Monday. I'm 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 going to stop right there and say, you know what? Probably the most important commandment, and I think everybody should should be taught it. My view is that it is not some arbitrary thing about God's day necessarily. It is. I, we talk about Shabbat and how Jewish families from sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday. Turn off all the devices, Mm -hmm. come together and be a family. That is one of the most powerful cultural tools in human in human arsenal. I was sitting in front of my computer the other night and I heard I was I just heard this frequency in my head like bam 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 bam. And I was like, what is that noise? That's my blood pressure. And when my monitor dimmed, it it stopped. Like these these machines are driving our minds. Probably probably affecting us in ways we don't know. But my point is remembering the Sabbath. One of the things that's breaking apart Western civilization is that we don't congregate with our families and our communities anymore. Yeah. And to your point, and like, that's what the Sabbath was. Christian communities, right, used to go to church together with your family, with your community. Then you'd go home and you weren't allowed to work and you're supposed to be talking to each other and thinking about the lessons that you are being taught in church through interpretation through your yeah. pastor or whatever I, else. Like, what I, it is about the moral growth of both your family and of the individual. It's and also it's, the idea of dedicating that day to God. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I agree with what you're saying that the degradation of our society is because of the breakdown of the family and the fact that even when families are together, we're all on the devices that wreck our brains. But that commandment, the interpretation of that commandment is to dedicate that day to God. That like, like I go to mass every Sunday because that's not, that's, that's, I go to mass to worship God the way that he laid out that he wants to be worshiped, right? And that's what it means to say, okay, that day is your day. It's not about me. It's not about my rest. Mm-hmm. It's not about my enrichment. It's about you. And so I will stop everything I'm doing and worship you. And I there's, think- there's, no, there's no question about any of the other commandments. I think there's literally no argument. Honor your father and your mother. Big time. It, it, yeah. it is, I, I'm sorry, if you don't honor your father and your mother, if you don't love them and care about them, I understand that people have fights and falling out and people, but there's always a love there for your family then there's something wrong, right? We, we, like, it is it is 99.999% of humans who love their parents. Mm-hmm. I was just going to ask Jazz Jennings' mother, would you expect Jazz Jennings to honor thy mother? That's a good question. The The answer is, as a mother, yes. But if Jazz's mother is doing her hateful and damaging things, it's not a mother, it's not, it's not an issue of mother, you know what I mean? She's what do you mean by honor, though? It's the definition of what do you mean by too. honor? Are you going to go out and you're going to ruin the dignity of this person that gave life to you? Or are you going to say, listen, you've abused me, and so with all due respect, I'm going to separate myself from that abuse, say what was wrong, and move on. Like, I think the word honor is pretty important there, mm-hmm. because... It's right. not a matter of like, oh, you're abusing me, but you're my mother. So I have so to, I have to listen to you for the rest totally. of my life. High respect. But, but so that, like that's to acknowledge question, though, why they are the way they are. Mm-hmm. You shall not murder. Yes, that is taught in all schools and to all children. And it's very important. We do. You shall not commit adultery, at least for the time being. We still have that cultural thing. But now you've got We're the rise of polycules. And and yeah. No, no fault right. divorce. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's Reagan's fault. It is. You shall not steal. Oh, boy. We're losing that one. But that's a no brainer. You the shall not. The government needs to teach itself that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you shall not bear false witness. Seriously, don't lie. You know, and then false shall, witness means like saying something, accusing someone else falsely. Like that's right. in, incredibly important for our culture now. Like think about all of the think about like the Kavanaugh stuff and all these false allegations. That's a deep fakes. They're false witnesses. Totally. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, you shall not covet. I I I, I agree with these. And you know. Mm-hmm. It's not even my, my perspective on them is not religious. Yours is yeah. my, my perspective is you will live a better life if you understand what these things do for humans. Yeah. Now, simply put, from a religious perspective, you're saying it's to better worship God. Yeah. My response is, OK, maybe that doesn't persuade someone. But I tell you, if you follow these, you'll be happier, healthier with a better family. Better yeah. kids. I mean- think having a shared moral understanding would make our stronger our, our society stronger. And I don't need to make you go to church if we all can agree by some basic rules. And so therefore, having the Ten Commandments in school and being like, here here are some basic rules that we all agree to would be a beneficial thing. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.